recording. Today I was talking to my assistant about um, the kind of fundamentals of building a great tone. Uh, actually I wasn't, but, <clears throat> but I did want to talk about some kind of things that I've been talking about to a couple of people. Uh, it's one person and he's always eager to help. Uh, why is that doing that? Anyway, so like you, I'm interested in building tones, whether that's with a modeler or with a real amp or whatever I'm doing, I kind of view them as the same sort of thing really, uh, in that you're presented with a piece of gear, whether it's modelled or real, and within that piece of gear there are a bunch of different tones available, and it's up to you to try and work out what those are going to be and how they work for you. Now you might have seen on my channel, I like to delve into the Helix amps and kind of see what those things sound like and kind of compare them to either their real life counterparts like I've done with the Klon or I've done with like a diesel VH4 pedal or bits and pieces like that. Look at the manual and see what it says from the manufacturer about how they would suggest tweaking their things. If the manuals aren't useful what I like to do is kind of start with everything at 12 o'clock. I don't know if that's like the best way to start stuff but you know like the neural DSP amp models start at 5 o'clock or at 12 o'clock everything at five. The fractal amp models tend to start somewhere around there with, you know, like, bass, the tone stack and all of that will be set at five. The Helix is a bit different to that, like there are some suggested settings from whoever's actually programmed those amp default settings, which you may get on with or you may not, but I guess this video is about turning those knobs and what I've learned from other people um, so in particular, the very first kind of example that I can think of for this was Eric Johnson. Say you've got a Marshall Plexi, you've got a gain knob, two gain knobs, you've got a bass, a mid, treble and a presence. Probably the first time that I'm conscious of noticing that he had his treble all the way off and his presence pretty much all the way off, or maybe the other way around, so the treble like almost all the way off and presence all the way off. To me that seemed like what is essentially quite an extreme setting and if you follow through his signal chain you know like the butler drive or the Chandler tube drive on those he's got the bass and the treble all the way off. I think that was kind of the first example I can think of these kind of extreme settings that work for someone to create that tone. I believe he also rolls off his tone knob on his strap. I don't know whether that's all the way but Tony will jump into the comments to let me know about that. And so I guess there's other examples of this, so I looked up Mark Tremonti and his dual rectifier setting kind of have the bass all the way up, uh, which sounds kind of extreme when you think about it, you know, he's playing with probably a couple of 4x12s and he's got a dual rectifier with a load of gain and the bass all the way up, surely that's going to sound fairly extreme. Uh, I'm told that Adam Jones from Tool on his diesel VH4 has the mids dimed. And so I wanted to jump into the HX Stomp and show you some of my kind of favourite extreme settings that I think work quite well that you might not have thought to try. You could try it on any other model or any amp as well, but little things that I like the sound of. It's... So, as I say, awkwardly enough, this was like the first place that I found out about this kind of technique that Eric Johnson uses. So. This preset was initially kind of built around that kind of idea of diming the mids. Um, so I'm using a litigator here, which is more of a Dumble style amp than a Marshall Plexi, but the principles are kind of there anyway. And the treble and the presence is off. Now you might think that this might sound a certain way. Um, I'm also running a high cut here, so I'm going to turn that off, but still show you that. <laughs> What looks to be a fairly extreme kind of setting becomes less extreme partly because it's a really high gain tone but also just because you've got the mid dimed it kind of counteracts that treble and presence being off. <laughs> Again, something which I think looks fairly extreme, this high cut down at kind of 4 kilohertz. So 
So it looks like an extreme number, that 3.9 kilohertz, but actually it's a fairly gentle, I think, six decibel per octave um, slope on that. So you can kind of hear that. impact that's having anyway. So don't be afraid. To take that high cut down lower if you're using kind of higher gain tones with a lot of that high end content, particularly if you're driving and already driven out. I think then if you're trying to get a more smooth lead tone with a single coil like I like to don't be afraid to use that lower cut. Now another kind of extreme thing which again came from someone who's eager to help. Uh, if we do this kind of low high shelf thing, I've talked about this before about adding heft. So I'm gonna take this low frequency down to 150 Hertz and that's gonna sound like the sort of thing which is gonna create problems and I'm gonna boost it by plus 12 dB, which again seems like a lot. And you're gonna to listen to the impact of this, so. quite extreme it ends up not really being that extreme when you actually hear it in context so that's just a, a low shelf in front of the cabinet but after the amp and that's giving like a bit of a kick in the lower end um, and I call this like heft adding heft and you know moving your trousers a little bit quite a nice little technique that I like to employ sometimes especially when you're at home with like headphones and stuff or studio monitors that can be like a nice little trick to get something going. So that's some settings that I like the sound of. So something else we could try here, I'll just try and build like a, a quick preset here. Uh, maybe we'll do it with an amp and cab just to make things quicker is, so we'll take Das Benzin Mega. So we'll move everything to five o'clock to start off with us. I think that's a perfectly fine place to start tweaking from. I'm using a strap, take things to five, including this little sneaky deep and then aside from that I think we'll turn the reflections up to maybe 20 and we'll just see what <laughs> So let's try an extreme technique of turning up the mids to 10. I think that really thickens up the guitar tone quite substantially and remember Obviously, this will be a sort of thing you're familiar with from like Metallica and stuff. <laughs> having less mids, but the idea of having way more mids to me is more appealing. <laughs> So 
So something fairly extreme there, but you know, from the, the playbook of Eric Johnson and Adam Jones. <laughs> And I guess you'll be very familiar with this if you're into metal, but this is, again, I think, you know, exercising the extremes of what a pedal can do. Uh, we're turning the gain way down on a tube screamer and, you know, using this to boost the front. <laughs> And maybe that can boost your mids even more, but again, importantly, I guess it's about listening and seeing whether that works for you. <laughs> Again, I mentioned uh, this Mark Tremonti type thing, so we could just try this a second, but Cali Rectifier, so you'll probably not be used to hearing this kind of thing, but... Kind of give your tone a lot of body with that bass all the way up at 10 and I think it sounds extreme for sure but that's apparently what Mark Tremonti does based on the pictures and if you're shaving some of that bottom end out with a tube screamer at the front So another thing that I like to do is kind of experiment with having higher treble settings or lower present settings or vice versa. <laughs> So I think the lesson here, if there is a lesson, if you were looking to me for advice, then I, I do apologize, that's uh, an issue. But like I say, I think I haven't actually said it before, so to say like I say it doesn't make sense, but there's a lot of music in extreme settings, I believe. For example there, you know, we've got that presence quite low, we've got the treble quite high, and we've got that bass quite high, and I think looking at it with the eyes, you think that's gonna sound a bit odd, then when you listen to it, even think that's a bit fizzy.
there's more to these tones than just what looks like extreme settings and things like diming the mids is definitely a personal favorite trick. <laughs> particularly for lead tones. But as I say, don't be afraid to necessarily try things that might look a bit odd. Things like turning presence all the way down, to me, is not extreme. Quite a limited band of frequencies that you're dealing with there, and oftentimes it can be kind of that frequency that we don't necessarily want loads of, especially with higher gain tones. The mids, kind of, I think of as basically a give me more of the tone kind of switch. This is, to me, where you find a lot of what makes the guitar work. So don't be afraid to get a little bit wacky with your settings is the uh, gist of the video. Sorry for wasting your time. So yeah, that's that bit of chat done. Um, don't be afraid to experiment with more extreme settings, particularly in like a bedroom setup like mine. Um, you can find some interesting things, like for me that mid-stimed is a massive thing. My friend from France, don't hold it against him, Johan, that's what I'm calling you, um, also found um, the Thai Octavia, um, the Tyco Octavia fuzz on the Helix. If you have that drive setting like way low, sort of like 1.9 or even down as far as 0.9, you could get some really sweet tones out of that. And Maybe I'll put some of that in the intro. Um, but yeah, extreme settings don't always sound like what they look like. Catch you in a bit.